Good afternoon, everyone. We are Next AR, and our project is a social AR exploring project. Now. But yeah, <laughs> just go through it for you guys, <laughs> really quick. So this is our team and our famous <laughs> advisors and clients. And welcome to our world. So first things first, why we call us Next AR? Because we want to explore more possibilities on the AR technology. And based on our client requirements, we are going to build a social AR experience. So it's a social AR experience, so it has to be a multiplayer one. But we research on the multiplayer AR experience in the market. We find out they just share the view of players. Is this like social VR? And we want to not just let them to share the view and operating on the objects together, but we want them to interact with players in the virtual world. And most of them has to be in the same locations. But what if we let them to be in the different locations and players can also enjoy our experience? With the technologies we have, we can get rid out of the controllers uh, they used to have and let them to use hands to interact with other things in the world. So we're creating a multiplayer AR experience for players are not in the same physical space and they can use hand gestures to interact with everything in the virtual world and uh, we want to bring them a meaningful and enjoyable social experience. So let's go into the darkness and find the right path for our project. Thank you, Bo Yi. And when we first got the topic of AR, we were so excited. So we researched a couple of fields. We started with some virtual AR products on the market, such as Magic Leap and HoloLens. We learned a lot from them, but they kind of still them have some social experience. So next, we go through some social VR projects such as Facebook Horizon, and we do learn a lot about how users have some social connections in a VR environment. So we dig uh, so we dig more about party games, both physical and video party game. We try to learn how could people uh, set up a connection in a very um, natural environment, and next we try to explore more about mobile AR applications. We learned how to mix reality and virtual reality together. With all this research, our next step was try to introduce social connections into AR experience. So how could we do it? We could build a game that could foster cooperation and competition. We could also build some training and education tools for students to learn some necessary knowledge and interaction at the same time. It could also be a tool for designers for there to share design thinking and communication at the same time. And we could also build a social AR experience to let them communication and share their feelings in our project. And all these ideas share the same areas. That is, they have cooperation, interaction, and communication and emotions together. So at this step, we finally found our goal for this semester, is we are building, uh, going to build a social AR experience that will foster our players to cooperation, interaction, and encourage them to communicate and share their feelings. And how did we build it on step by step? We designed, prototype, play test, and refine in loops. So now we have four prototypes. And we also learn and develop our project at the same time. For our first prototype, we will try to figure out what could we do with our devices. Because if we do not know about our devices very well, we do not know about the limitations and potentials, how could we build up a good design? So our first step would try to figure out how could our devices bring us a path through AR with gesture interaction, and how could we do with all these devices? So, Max, could you let us know? Oh, sure, definitely. So for the first prototype, we were really curious about the potential of our devices. And here is all our devices. We have HTC Vive, Leap Motion, and their camera. And you guys may be just curious about like what exactly is the pass-through AR we are talking about right now, and like how we are doing this in actually a VR device. The magic here is 
that camera. So basically, that camera itself is just a depth camera which will create multiple layers of depth when it looks into the real world. So with this uh, feature, we can create some uh, interesting and realistic interaction between the uh, virtual uh, game objects and the real uh, objects in the real world. And we put that on the VR headset, and this is how it looks like when the player put on the headset. And this is the pass-through AR we are talking about for our project. And what about hand gestures? Since hand gestures is the only user input designed for our project, we use leap motion for that because it has good field of view and uh, uh, good enough accuracy for hand gesture detection, given its size is only like this big, which is pretty amazing. However, we did find out a limitation during our first uh, prototype for this device. Although it is good enough for detecting all normal hand gestures, like clapping, thumbs up, thumbs down, something like this, it is not accurate enough to detect complicated hand gestures like uh, overlapping fingers, or do detection on each finger's uh, movement detection and something like that. Which means some Naruto ninja style hand gesture will probably be not very feasible for our project. Is that clear enough, Lai? Sure. Thank you so much, Max. Now we have a much better understanding about how our devices work. And we also tried a lot of leap motion demos and previous ETC AR projects. And then we decided our first prototype could be a single player with gesture interaction in an AR environment. So this is how did our first prototype goes. <laughs> so our players could uh, 3D drawing with their hand and also generate some cubes by hand gestures. <laughs> and after a couple rounds of play test, we got some awesome feedback that our players really engaged in our play test and the gesture interaction worked well. And they are, uh, they are also ready for the next step, which is multiplayer interactions. And next, Jamie will lead us to the next part. Thank you, Lai. Since our goal is to create an engaging experience to enhance social relationship within the players, we wanted to explore gesture interaction that took person can do something together in an AR environment. So we did brainstorm before we creating an actual prototype for the different activities that two people can do something together. For example, they can socialize by high-fiving and clapping, and play sports together by grabbing catching drink balls, and interact with hand gestures such as stretching noodles together or pouring a cup of tea for another person and doing activities like fishing or sawing woods together. So based on the brainstorm, we decided on high-fiving and clapping interaction for our second prototype. So, and it's simple interaction that two people can easily do something together. Not only the hand gesture, but also we brought avatar in our environment to embody each user and um, represent the location and the emotion. And also we brought the voice chat system in our experience to foster communication and give more connections to the players. With our prototype, uh, players can interact with each other by high-fiving and clapping while players are not in the same space. So, Isaac, is it doable? Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, and it can be super easy. But uh, although I want to be so confident, but the life is just not so easy, right? <laughs> so during our process, we actually encountered a lot of problems due to the network. For example, if we uh, in our early prototype, this is what we get when we want to show our hands to each other. You can see if even if I can see my hands very smooth, the others will see it very laggy, and this is not what we want. It's not a smooth experience for our players. So what's wrong with it? If you imagine how many data we need to send through the network to the other person if we want they to see our hands, here is the answer. So this number is not a small number that we can ignore for our project. So by, by utilizing some optimization methods like quantization, we finally mm, managed to shrink this number to a fairly small one. And this is acceptable for our project currently. So finally, we got a prototype which is very smooth. As you can see in the video, players can see each other's avatars very smooth, and they can 
clapping their hands, they can high five with each other, and all the VFX just runs very well. During our playtest, this just works and this goes very well. So powered with our network feature, now we can move to the next step, right? Right, thank you. It looks awesome. Through playtesting, we learned that um, players were surprised that they can interact with each other in an AR world, but we wanted to explore more playful contents to have a more engaging experience for the users. So we thought it would be more engaging if we uh, let players to give objects to play with within the AR environment. Based on the brainstorm, we came up with the idea of picking and passing a cube to the another person. So this is our third prototype. Players can clap in their hands and it is automatically generating the colorful cubes. They can simply pick and pass the cube to the other person. So, through playtesting, we learned players will interact with each other smoothly and interact with objects engagingly. However, we wanted to have combined three prototypes to foster communication and create the engaging interaction between the two players and let players to feel more natural and then um, real in our environment. So we figured out um, it is more great opportunity for players to connect with each other by doing activities together cooperatively. We believe it will create foster interaction and great physics feedback to achieve a goal. So this is our fourth prototype. Each player can hold one board together. And then to make it more challenge, the yeah, players can um, do um, yeah, try to hold the ball together and then doing something work to create more interactive activities. So, boy, what's next? Very cool. Again, I really welcome you guys to try our demos. And because I, I have the experience at, at ETC to play with some AI experience. But after I try our demos, I was like, wow, it's amazing. It's different from others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, just come and try. Uh, now uh, we are halfway to the mountain top, and during this process, uh, we keep asking us, uh, "What is the next? Uh, what is the uh, is there any other possibilities we can do?" So, uh, the first one is emotion express. So when we uh, play test uh, some social VR products, and uh, we play in the common area, and uh, most of the players just like this and yeah, move around. So there is no facial expressions on their faces. So the next step, we want to try to. Uh, uh, just try try to make them make our avatar's facial expression was triggered by all the activities they have done, and uh, they can easy they can simply choose their emotions facial expressions by using just one hand, and they can sweep their hands and squeeze it, and the emoji will automatically automatically appear in their faces. Uh, also, we want to go even crazier, so we wanted to try to blur the boundary between AR and the reality. So this is a, a surprise moment when we play test our our demo. So when I play test with Max and I saw Max avatar was sitting on my table and trying to operate my keyboards, I was I was shocked. I was, what can you see it? Yeah, <laughs> why why? Just, just, it's it's a really inspiring moment. And after that, we talk about like can we try to blur the boundary? And we come up with a simple idea. So both players have a physical container in their physical world, but all the objects are virtual. So which means they can put on the uh, AR headset and they can share the virtual uh, things in the physical containers. And another virtual avatars can take away the things from my containers and I will feel like, yeah, you actually interact with my physical things and we want to try to go this uh, directions uh, to explore what will happen. And at the end of the semester, we want to uh, make all the things uh, we have together to uh, bring us, bring our guests a completely meaningful and engaging uh, experience. So recap, we are next AR and our project is a social AR exploring project. We're going to create a multiplayer social AR game 
for players who are not in the different who are not in the same physical locations, they can use hand gestures to interact with everything in the world, and we want to bring them an enjoyable, meaningful, compelling, uh, playful social exper AR experience. And uh, uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, we're open for questions now. Uh, the question is, what is the difficulty uh, of blurring the boundary between the AR and the reality? And uh, uh, I think, uh, can I answer? Yes. So I think uh, this is the first uh, uh, demo, we, this is the first idea we have, it's pretty initial right now. And, uh, uh, and the plan we have is to uh, set up two uh, physical containers in different world and at the same space at the exactly the same locations in the virtual world so we just want uh, we want to test if the feeling is good but the technology part we can keep doing it and figure it out no. yes. uh, how, how long are the experiences that you're looking to create uh, so the question is how long will the experience be we're looking to create <laughs> this is my first time to be the Mac man. So, yeah. um, I'll say it depends on what we, how many uh, activities we have. So our our idea for now is uh, it's around like five minutes. So it's like uh, we can use a, a physical container as a, a core directions, a core mechanic of it, and it's kind of like a magic box. So players can grab things out of it, and uh, we can something it's like they can grab things randomly and they can play with this stuff then they can grab other things and it took so we don't have a time limit actually we don't have an exactly time limitation for the whole experience but we wanted them to try out all the stuff we have probably it's like within 10 minutes yeah. you really play test the go not go that, that long just five minutes Uh, so the question is, how many players are we going to support? Oh. So I think basically it uh, depends on our networking, uh, so our bandwidth. So if we have enough bandwidth, I, I, I think we can just serve as many as possible we want. But I think the limitation will be like around uh, five or six pe uh, people at the same time because uh, we don't have a big bandwidth and we have networking latency and lagging issue and more people will make it be not so smooth and it won't be a good experience for our players so we might want to limit it into like four or five or six people at the same time thank you yeah, but we only have two devices right now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so the question is how we handle the physics between two devices. Uh, so actually, we are using our engine four. So uh, UE four is uh, had a built-in network model, which is client server model. So basically, all the simulation is happening on the server. But in this model, we are experiencing some lagging things for the clients because the clients need to wait for the server to respond to all the things, the physics things. So we have changed the model to a, or should I say, a distributed simulation one. So which means the client will just simulate the physics by itself when you, like when the client grab a cube, so he will simulate the cube by himself. Then he will send the data to the server. So the server can broadcast all the data to other clients. So in this way, all the clients will get a lag-free experience because they just don't need to wait for the server. Uh, is that clear? Thank you. Yeah. Well, skip it. Yeah. <laughs> Next AR. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.